And if you want to start off with any reactions you might have from uh, the public comment we have here today. Well, maybe that's, thank you, um, Chairman Avalos, and uh, thank you, Supervisors. Uh, first of all, it's, it's been a long day, a long night, um, and uh, it's a little ironic to be the last speaker saying this, but welcome to Golden Gate Park. Uh, welcome here. Actually, April is the 140th anniversary of this incredible park. And, you know, rather than going through a, uh, a, a, a formal structured presentation, I think after listening to three hours of a public comment, I'd actually rather speak from the heart. And I'd rather speak as not just a general manager, but as a San Franciscan, as someone who lives on the edge of this park, as someone who is in this park every single day, as someone who has raised his kids in this park, in these very botanical gardens. So I, I approach my job as this is more than just a job to me. This is what keeps my family living in San Francisco. It's our parks and our open spaces. And keeping this is if I can stop you a sec. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, uh, we really need to keep it down in the back. Appreciate it. Um, if, maybe if you guys are arguing, we can go to different places. That might be the best thing to do. Okay, thank you. You know, from a park's perspective, there may be just two types of San Franciscans. Um, there are those, like me, quite frankly, that, that have a choice. We have a choice about whether we want to live in San Francisco or not. And sometimes when it's tough to get your kid into a public school and it's tough to find a place to park your car or afford uh, an apartment or a house, you get frustrated and you just want to maybe move someplace else where life is easier. And what is it that keeps families in San Francisco? It's our parks. And it's our open space. And it's our recreation opportunities. And there's another group of San Franciscans that may not have a choice, whether that's for financial reasons, or uh, physical capacity reasons, or family commitments. And for those folks that are born here and live here and will die here, our parks and our open space and our recreational opportunities becomes an issue of social justice. And so what you're hearing tonight, this very passionate debate, is actually a good one for parks. Because what you're hearing is tension over the scarcity of parks funding. That's what you're hearing. We don't have enough resources and we don't have enough open space. And so we have debates about how we want to use those resources and what the best ways to use those resources. But as we think about the importance of our parks and the importance of our recreation facilities and the rec public recreation that we provide, and the challenges that you face this year with your $450 million budget challenge, the, our most important mission is financial sustainability. And so this debate about whether a fee, a non-resident fee is appropriate here is actually very um, uh, symbolic. It's a metaphor for our larger budget challenges. So if you bear with me, I, I, I won't be too long. I hear you. We've had a, we have to either cut or raise $12.4 million of our $33 million in general fund support. That is almost one third of our general fund subsidies. Every dollar Every dollar that we, every dollar that we don't raise, we have to cut. So we've been faced with a series of very, very, very difficult choices. We're not up here joyous about fees. We're not up here joyous about cuts or service reductions. And as some of my staff members have indicated, we have pulled together, and not just as a staff, but as a staff and as a community with over 40 different budget meetings in one context or another to try to be as creative as we can be in solving this problem. So while you're facing a ton of different difficult decisions in why, let me tell you something about the choices that we've made. We have done our very, very, very best to prioritize revenue over cuts. Three quarters of our budget solutions, three quarters, 75% of our budget solution is revenue. And it's a whole wide variety of ideas. And we don't expect unanimity in San Francisco on anything. We understand that. But we are trying our best, frankly, to help you by becoming a little bit more financially self-sufficient and financially sustainable. One quarter of our budget solutions are cuts. And they're really horrible, painful, difficult cuts. Every dollar that we don't raise is another dollar that we have to cut. So because time is short, let's jump to this non-resident fee for just a second. Okay? And if you look at it, our budget, our budget instruction 
we were asked our baseline budget cut was 20%. This department provides, forget about the botanical, the botanical society has been a partner of this department for over 50 years. They're the ones out there raising money for their capital program. They're the ones actually subsidizing everything we do out here through an incredible partnership. But let's talk about the general fund commitment to this beautiful place that everybody loves. $1.2 million. A 20% baseline reduction of that $1.2 million, if I were really to spread it across the board of this department, is $240,000. The anticipated annual revenue from a non-resident fee is almost precisely that. That, by the way, is three jobs. That is three gardeners or three recreation directors. That's the reality. This fee doesn't pass. I have a $250,000 hole in my budget that I have to solve through cuts. The Botanical Gardens is 55 acres. It is staffed with over 11 gardeners. McLaren Park, 313 acres. And by the way, Five gardeners, it may actually, it's actually more like three. Because we have a gardener at Lewis Sutter and then we borrow a gardener on a sort of a periodic as needed basis. So let's call it three and a half to four. That doesn't sit well with me. This place has 11 gardeners because it's a treasure. It's special, it's different, it's unique. And we have to create a sustainable model. And I came along after last year's fight over this, but this is a little different for a one fundamental reason that people are overlooking. We are not talking about charging our residents. Yeah. It will remain free. What we are talking about is a non-resident fee. And for those who say that's the camel's nose through the tent door, it's a slippery slope, or whatever, you know what? You, I don't have authority to set fees, you do. This fee has to come to you. The non-resident fee comes to you, you can approve it or not approve it. But a resident fee also comes to you, and we are not asking you for one. We are asking for authority to impose a non-resident fee. And as you can see, what we're proposing is not unique for botanical gardens across the country. You're right, this is a small piece of the puzzle. This is $250,000 of our $12 million problem and your $455 million problem. But it's very real. And it's very real for my staff who's gonna go through a lot of pain this year as we try to even take our 25% of our problem and solve it through cuts. And it gets back and I'll end where we started. The one thing that really pleases me about this debate, as passionate as it is, and as much as people disagree, everybody in this room is united by one thing, and that's their love of parks. And we're struggling with the fact that we have scarce resources. Thank you very much. Thank you.